Welcome to part two of my dynamic duo video. Before I continue, a few viewers have asked, what exactly is WAR and how do I use this to rank these duos? Well, quickly, WAR stands for Wins Above Replacement. A value is given to every player based on their play throughout the season, taking into account their offense, defense, and base running ability. That value is essentially telling you the difference between him and if he were to be replaced by an average player from the minors or free agency. So if you have a war of four after a season, it's saying that you help the team win four extra games as opposed to an average player in the same position. It's a great tool to use, especially when comparing players with similar stats or players from different eras whose stats look dramatically different. I hope this helped understand the importance of this stat and why I like to use it. Now with that all being said, on with the video. To begin things at 30, two players with the New York state of mind from 05 till 2013, bringing a bell with a 90 total war. The first being a second baseman with five silver slug awards, Mr. Robinson Cano. Here he is with an 07 tops refractor. He had his most productive years with the pinstripes, helping the Yankees hoist the championship in 09, along with his duo teammate, Mr. Alex Rodriguez. Here he's showcased with an 05 Topps Gold Card. Twice an MVP in 05 and 07. Coincidentally, 07 happened to be their best year together. It's tough to argue though that A-Rock carried that duo that year with stats that were unrivaled. Unfortunately, the pride for these two were diminished when later it was found out their accomplishments were aided by the juice. This is why the duo at 34 is still my personal favorite. But this duo of stats in war ultimately landed them higher and I have to accept that it is what it is. Grounded softly to third, A-Rod Fields, fires, got him! That one is laced in the left field, it is a base hit. Matsui had a hold up, A-Rod will score, it's an RBI single for Cano. Fly ball to center field, well hit! Next at 29, playing for the duration of 11 years, ringing the bell with a total war of 89.7. They were able to outperform the previous duo by just enough to earn them this spot. Kicking things off with David Ortiz, pictured here gazing at a towering bomb with his 2008 Upper Deck SP, one of the most feared hitters in the 2000s. But his mate was the 2008 MVP, none other than Mr. Dustin Pedroia, showcased here with his 2007 Topps card. In 2016, they put up pretty nice stats together. They imposed their will on opposing pitchers. Now I know, you're wondering, wait, what about Manny? Manny and Ortiz were beastly. Yes, they were, but for only half as long, for only five and a half years. But just as scary a tandem, if not scarier. Now, I'll let Manny Ramirez share a little bit of the spotlight here because he was imposing with David Ortiz as a dynamic duo. Here's his 06 Bowman card with what was noted as one of the sweetest swings by a righty in baseball. As a Yankees fan, I recall dreading either of these three stepping to the plate. But ultimately, longevity rules here. This is simply a case where Manny and Ortiz didn't play long enough to garner the spot. Thus, Dustin Pedroy and David Ortiz will remain as our 29th ranked duo in this ranking and go down as one of the best duos in Red Sox history. Here's a payoff pitch. And a high fly ball to deep left field. La Luna. Ortiz in the deep right field. Back is Sheffield. We'll see you later tonight. Bases loaded. Two out. Up next at 28, I have a duo that had a war of 89.6, and that's 0.1% less than the previous duo in two less years. And the reason why was throughout the 90s, one of them was putting a hurting on baseballs. And if that wasn't a clue for you or you were too young to be familiar with this player, well, let me introduce you to the big hurt, 
Mr. Frank Thomas. Here's his 1990 Leaf rookie card. He was the two-time MVP in 1993 and 94, plus the 1997 batting champion. I think it's such an accomplishment to be able to bludgeon a baseball and still never sacrifice your average. And that was Frank Thomas. Now, while he was considered Batman, his dynamic duo mate was considered Robin. And ironically, that was his name, Mr. Robin Ventura, the five-time Gold Glove winner here in his 1989 Topps rookie card. Both of these players were at their best in 96, putting up great power numbers and helping to bring in lots of runs. And also, they were able to help Mr. Hawk Harrelson stay very busy throughout those years. Next at 27 is a duo from 1925 into 1932, playing for the famed Connie Mack Philadelphia A's, a fantastic duo that averaged 10 and a half war per year over those eight years, starting things off with the catcher, Mickey Cochran. His is 1933 card by Gowdy. One of the captains that was able to average 321 throughout those eight years. One of the many bats for that dynasty team followed by none other than Al Simmons. Here's Al with his 1933 DeLong card. This player was named Old Bucketfoot because he was able to plant his feet and show his technique worked well with a staggering average of 365 over those eight years. And in 1930, yeah, that's when they drove the pitchers mad with averages that kept coming at you. But Mickey was also known for orchestrating his rotation that kept the opposition in check. Here, take a listen. Mickey, how do they look to you this year? Well, they look fine. All our veteran pitchers look just as good as ever. Groves is, looks to be just as fast. Wahlberg looks fine. And so does Mahaffey. Now, I look for quite a lot of pitching out of this young fellow Bowman. All together, I think we'll get just as good pitching this year as we got last, and that ought to be enough to win for us. At 26, again with back to back, catcher and slugger duo like the last video. This one playing from 1936 to 46, with a gap in between due to the war, averaging over 10 per year with war, while more than doubling the last duo on championships. First up, Mr. Bill Dickey in his 1940 play ball card. He's a nine time All Star that hit for better power than the last catcher, while never sacrificing his average. But this pair's famous other half is none other than Mr. Jolton Joe DiMaggio, here with his 1951 Burke Ross card. He's twice an MVP in 1939 and 41. And in those years, he put together a streak that'll never be broken. Their best year was in 1937. Great average with great power and driving in runs and bunches. This perfect pairing held New York down for a decade, bridging it on from duo to duo. The next two at 25 aren't built like mountains, but damn well play like some. I guess it's part of acclimating oneself to the surroundings. By looking at the stats they put up over eight years, I'd say they fit right in with the team name being the Colorado Rockies. The first mini mountain is Mr. Todd Helton, here with his 98 Bowman rookie card. You could say he outplayed his partner, but not by much, because his teammate ended up becoming a Hall of Famer. And that Hall of Famer is none other than Mr. Larry Walker. This 99 Bowman card epitomizes his career with a late bloomer splashed across the top. In 2001, yeah, that was a year that they were unstoppable. 
both winning multiple gold gloves to go with multiple silver slugger awards. An MVP, batting titles, home run leader, RBI leader. I mean, if not for playing only eight years together, they'd be definitely a whole lot more higher on this list. Drives it to deep right, forget about it. His third homer tonight. The next duo at 24 decided, much like the last duo, to take the name on their chest very seriously. Well, one did literally and transformed it to one. The other merely played like one. With an average war of 1381 over just six years, some wondered what the hell was in the water they were drinking. Well, clearly, it seemed like something rubbed off on them. And if those clues didn't give it away, I'm speaking of none other than Mr. Barry Bonds. Here he is in his 1993 Upper Deck SP, taking a full giant size hack and sending balls off to take a swim. Putting up stats worthy of the Hall of Fame within those six years along with Mr. Jeff Kent. Captured here in his 2002 Topps Finest card. Both had giant years in 2002. But Bonds was damn near unpitchable throughout those six years. Walk him and Kent made sure he paid for it. Together they had three MVPs, seven Silver Slug Awards. It took others a decade or more to accomplish what these two did in just six years. Deep to right field. This one is on its way to McCovey Cole. Number 500. It's into the water. Unbelievable. And Kent with a deep drive to left. His second homer of the night is soaring out of here. Here comes the pitch. Swing the drive. Hit the deep left field. Did he do it again? Yes, he did. It's one high. It's a deep. Is it fair? It is. Out of here. Game time. Up next at 23, two players who played their whole career together. 15 years in total from 1975 to 1988, putting up a total war of 105. The first of which holds the honor of being the only other player in the AEL, along with Ty Cobb, to lead the league in total bases three years in a row. And also, he won the 1978 MVP. That's none other than Mr. Jim Rice, making his appearance here with his 1976 Topps Rookie Cup card. I like the way he looked in this card so much, I figured, why not double it up? So here's his teammate, Mr. Dwight Evans. He's an eight-time gold glove at right, twice a Silver Slug Award winner. There's no disputing what a tandem they were, and they showed they were at their best in 1984. Now, as far as the Red Sox go, I figured, yeah, what about Yaz? He was also a great, but he almost threw a monkey wrench if not for me checking their stats. He was great throughout the 60s, over a decade before either of these two became great players. And when it comes to war, he had 55 and a half with Jim and 70.3 with Dewey. Ultimately, Yaz goes down as all-time Red Sox great, and these two go down as number 23 in my dynamic duo rankings. The next ranking at 22, I'll introduce together. Playing 11 years as a double play combination, so why not keep them together for this video? Playing a second and short for the Phillies, Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley. Combination that had the middle on lock. Here's Chase with his Bowman 01 rookie card, but not to be outdone by Jimmy Rollins and his 01 Topps gold card. They both were recognized as some of the best players at their positions. The fact that they were a great double play combo was great. But being responsible for a large percentage of their team's run production was what made them invaluable. They were at their best in 07, with statistics that make other middle infielders jealous. They both were also known for some of the longest hit streaks in recent histories, with 36 straight in 05 for Rollins and 35 straight the following year for Utley. A unique tandem that manned the middle, helped to snuff out rallies and kickstart rallies while being a major part of the 08 championship. Shot into right. Utley has gone deep again. 
What a night, 2 nothing Philadelphia. A pitch to Zimmerman. Brown ball up the middle. J. Roll dies to Utley. What? Really? The Phillies are the National League Eastern Division champions. Towards the hole, Rollins backhands out at second oh, to wow. first. Wow. Oh, a run wow. scores, but what a double play turned by the Phillies. Swing and a drive, right center field. This one is falling. It's a base hit. It'll go up the alley. Rutland will score. Ruiz around third. He is being waved home. The Phillies have won the ball game. Ruiz yes. slides. Rollins has won it. They stream out of the double. Yeah. Rollins by yeah. near third. This game is over as the Phillies strike. Last at 21, a duo who signed for eight years outside of the U.S. They were both the pride of Quebec and inherited nicknames that matched their personalities. The first one anointed, the kid, Gary Carter. Both of us have the same passions. Here's proof. With baseball, um, you know, I get more in depth with it because I enjoy the game so much. I, I collect baseball cards. I... I told you, we're practically brothers, looking nice in the 77 tops card. He was considered the best catcher in the National League. His partner was also one of the best outfielders in the National League, the Hawk, Andre Dawson, in a 79 tops card looking pensive, probably thinking about what to have for dinner. They both shined in 82, garnering many gold gloves and silver slug awards. A duo should have been kept together for many more years. Unfortunately, the Expos didn't see it that way. So that's the end to this video. I hope you enjoyed the first half of this series. I'll get to work on part three ASAP. Comment and let me know which duo you like the best. Hit the like button if you haven't and subscribe. Until the next one, happy hunting when it comes to cards and stay safe.